Okay, so we were discussing about homogeneous nucleation. Now, one more thing we were with respect to probability of nucleation is to talk in terms of uh, nucleation rate. So, today we will talk about nucleation rate. Okay, so, again we get back to the same uh, equation. Let us say R star is uh, the critical radius and if we want to find how many clusters of those size are found or can be found, we can write it like this n r or actually uh, let us make it n r star equal to n naught e x p minus delta g star. Again when I say star remember it is about the critical value. So, this is r is uh, n star meaning that number of clusters of that critical size the r star value. Similarly, this delta g star is the free energy change for that critical radius for the formation of that critical size radius divided by k t. Now, this is the total number of clusters of critical size. If we add just one more atom to this, it will become solid because now it will have a free energy change or which is negative meaning the free energy will reduce. Hence, we have to just look at the frequency at which this can happen. Let us say that frequency is f naught then the nucleation rate or n since it is homogeneous we can write n homogeneous equal to this is nucleation rate for under the condition that homogeneous nucleation is taking place. So, this is what we are terming as and this is the frequency, the frequency at which the atoms get attached to these nuclei, this critical nuclei which were formed. Now, uh, like we said earlier that as soon as the size of this nuclei becomes larger than R star, it will become stable, it will be get transformed from liquid to solid. And therefore, uh, this is the frequency at which nucleation, nucleus, the critical nucleus is becoming super size or above the critical size and hence it is becoming getting transformed into uh, solid, uh, into the solid. Now, this rate of uh, homogeneous nucleation, it can be rewritten if we expand the terms of delta g star and then you would see that it can be written like you remember delta g star was inversely proportional to delta t uh, square of delta uh, inversely proportional to square of delta t. So, we have changed this delta g star into a into a term like a divided by delta t square. Now, a also contains this uh, 1 over k t term. Now, why we have written it like this? Because a is you can if you want to look at the fu uh, full form of a, it can be written like it can be given by this equation. why we are writing it like this is because we are saying that this a is relatively a thermal quantity this a term is relatively a thermal quantity now you would say there is a t term over here then how come it is relatively or it is a thermal. See this that is where we are saying relatively. Now, if you look at delta t in with respect to that t is actually a thermal. 
Now let us say you are very close to delta t, uh, sorry you are very close to t m and you are just 1 degree below it. So, t m t is over here equal to t m minus 1, but delta t is equal to 1. Now, if you change this temperature to uh, t m minus 2, so this has changed by a very minor quantity, but this has become twice and therefore, this the, if you take the square of it, this becomes 4. So, it, this whole quantity becomes 1 over 4 and therefore, this is a much more dominant term because we are looking only at delta t and in that respect, this is a athermal quantity. Now, this f naught, what is this f naught? This is f naught is a very you can say complex in the sense that it is it depends on lot of other factors. So, in general it is found that f naught is a, of the order of 10 to the power 11 per second. So, we will take this as a constant quantity and put it over here and therefore, you have this f naught, you have n naught, you have this exponential term where a is a relatively a thermal quantity and delta t is the drop or the undercooling amount of undercooling. So, this is the overall equation for nucleation rate. Now, if you try to plot it with respect to delta t, how will it look like? This let us say this is the on the x axis we have delta t and over here we have n which is the nucleation rate. Then it so happens that delta t this is how the plot will look like meaning this nucleation number of uh, the rate of nucleation the number of nucleus that becomes super size or above the critical size suddenly increases as you drop the undercooling beyond this. So, there is a critical value below which you will not see any amount of uh, nucleation and we saw that even earlier which is which what we termed as delta T n, but if you go beyond this uh, critical undercooling or you decrease the temperature below this uh, delta uh, undercooling, then suddenly there is explosion of nucleus and you will see a lot of nuclei growing inside the material. So, this is how the change in the nucleation rate takes place with respect to undercooling. Let us summarize. So, in fact, nucleation rate explodes below this undercooling. However, this undercooling that we are talking about, we have not yet looked at the absolute quantity, what absolute, uh, what is the absolute value for this. In general, this delta T n is approximately equal to 0 0.2 times T m. So, if uh, and most of the materials will have melting point somewhere of the order of 1000, we are talking about order. So, we are looking at 200 Kelvin. So, this is a very, very large undercooling that we are talking about. So, it for homogeneous nucleation, you require a very large undercooling for the increase in the nuclei or the point below which you will see a very large number of uh, growth in the nucleus. So, in practice what happens is that homogeneous nucleation is not so common. Then what is so common? And here it is here that we uh, try to understand heterogeneous nucleation. Okay. So, now at this point I will also invoke uh, earlier point I that, that I made where I said that the R star as well as delta G star are proportional to the surface energy term. In fact, uh, to the square and cube of those uh, surface energy term, which means that if you increase the surface energy, it uh, the R star value becomes very large and we know from earlier that if R star becomes large, then probability decreases. On the other hand, if you decrease this gamma SL term, it means R star drops, delta G star drops. So, probability of nucleation becomes large and that is where heterogeneous nucleation comes into picture. You can achieve heterogeneous nucleation in by changing this gamma SL term, the change in the surface energy term. How do we get that? What we do is or what, we, what actually the nature does is that it forms a surface at the place where there already was a surface. Therefore, you are actually looking only at the difference in the surface energy. Let us uh, look at this picture in a greater detail. So, let us say this is mold, this is liquid. Mold is anything which is containing the liquid or the material that has to be solidified and this is where your liquid is. 
Now, there is an interface between liquid and mold and whenever there is an interface, there will be energy associated with it. Now, let us say you form a solid over here. So, this is our solid, newly formed solid. So, what do we see? This uh, surface energy which existed earlier has now been replaced in effect by this new surface energy, this new surface. And therefore, when we are looking at the surface energy terms, we are only looking at difference in the energy of the newly formed surface and what has already, what has been taken away. Because of this, we will see that heterogeneous nucleation becomes lot more probable and lot more, uh, uh, you can say, easy to form or uh, heterogeneous nucleation becomes the much more preferred route. Now, when we are looking at it, let us, uh, we will also have to formulate the equations. So, let us look at it, if there is will be surface energy associated with this, which was also the surface uh, that existed before the solid formed and since it is between mold and liquid, we will denote it by term m l comma underscore m l. Now, there is a new surface between solid and the liquid. So, this uh, surface, remember surface energy is also equal to the tension, surface tension. So, here we are representing it as a tension which is a vector. So, th this is the gamma solid liquid which is represented by gamma S L, gamma subscript S L. And over here we have a interface between solid and mold which will be represented since it is not uh, very clearly visible. So, let me draw it in red. So, this is our gamma S M and there is a angle included angle over here which is given by theta. Now, if we take, if we try to do a horizontal balance of forces because these are, remember like I said these are tensions. So, in the horizontal, let us do it in the horizontal direction. Okay, so, uh, one thing I forgot to mention. So, let me write it here. We are talking about now heterogeneous nucleation. So, in the heterogeneous nucleation, we have this uh, solid formed at one of the preferred sites. You see, this is not inside the solid, sorry, not inside the liquid. It is at a preferred site. And what is that preferred site? It is this mold. So, this solid has formed at the mold liquid interface. And in that sense, it is not homogeneous, meaning it is not forming uh, in a random way. Now, to de uh, derive the equation for delta G star and R star, we are looking at the surface energy terms. So, we had three surface energy terms, gamma M L, gamma S L and gamma S M. And since the contact angle is equal to theta, so in the horizontal direction, we can say gamma M L is equal to gamma S M plus gamma S L cos theta. Or in other words, we can write So, this is uh, the cos theta term. Now, remember that this theta is representing now a relation between the three different surface energy terms. That is one thing. Another thing, theta is representing relation between at the same time, we have assumed a shape which is a part of the sphere. Okay. For simplicity, you can say we have assumed this kind of shape. So, what is this shape? This is a part of the sphere. So, this theta is also telling us what fraction of that sphere has actually, is actually seen over there. So, this theta is also related to the geometry of the cap.
and because theta is serving two purpose over here, it also makes our job easier and we can see that delta g star value which should be first written. So, now we will uh, try to formulate how the delta g term should look like and then we will go on to how the delta g star can be obtained. So, if we are looking at delta g again there will be a volumetric term and there will be a area term. So, remember this volumetric term is what the negative or which reduces the overall energy and area term is what increases the energy. But over here we have also gotten rid of some area surface area. So, energy associated with that and uh, that area has been taken off. So, that will also come to reduce the overall free energy and therefore, we will get equation of this form. See, we have again added a negative uh, negative sign over here, meaning although this uh, delta G V itself should have been a negative uh, quantity, but to make it to make the mathematics simpler, we are assuming this is a positive quantity and to uh, and since it is leading to reduction in energy, there is a negative term. So, this overall quantity still remains negative. Over here A S L is the area of surface liquid, which is this part. So, this surface has been newly created and therefore, it will add to the energy and the energy of this is gamma S L. So, A S L times gamma S L. Second, we have A S M term which is this area. Now, this is the area which was earlier occupied as by uh, between the solid and the liquid, but now it is occupied between solid and the mold. So, this new area has been created by taking away the interface between solid and liquid. So, one quantity has been added which is A S M times gamma S M while the other quantity which is A S M times gamma M L has been taken off. So, that, that is how you are getting all these terms. Now, when you put in the geometry factor for V S which is part of the sphere which can be exp, uh, which can be explained in terms of theta. Similarly, you can express uh, gamma m l and gamma s m in terms of theta, you can uh, you can find that this delta g for this heterogeneous nucleation reduces to a very simple equation like this. times s theta. Okay. So, there is a factor s which is a function of theta. Now, let us look at this equation again delta g heterogeneous is this term times overall this thing times this s of theta which is a function of theta. Now, do you recall this value this equation? This equation is the same equation that we obtained for homogeneous nucleation. So, this is uh, really in a way effect uh, very surprising in a way that we are able to get a equation which is very similar in form to what we obtained for homogeneous nucleation. The only difference is this term as theta and it is possible because this theta is related in two different ways to the uh, geometry that we discussed. One it is able to relate the surface energy and one it is a uh, second it is also able to relate the geometry of the cap meaning what fraction of the cap we are looking at. And since we are talking about s theta, we can write what is this s theta, it is given by this equation. Now, if you look at the form of the equation, what can you say is the maximum value of s theta? If you try to find the maximum value, you would see that s theta will have a maximum value of 1, which means that 
in all the cases s theta would be less than equal to 1. In fact, it will not even reach 1, it will always be less than 1. Again, it will have a very interesting implication, we will look at it in just a moment. So, that is the form of the equation delta G heterogeneous, this is the overall change in energy. Okay. We have for some for any radius r, we have not yet talked about the critical radius and what do we need to do for critical radius? Remember, we have to we have to differentiate this equation with r. When you differentiate the equation with r and equate it to 0, which is equivalent to saying you are trying to find the maximum for this equation, you will be able to get r star value and when you put that r star value back into the equation, you get delta g star. So, I will again without going into those uh, mathematics, I will write, I will write down the final values. So, r star value that you get and delta g star. So, these are the critical values that was the overall change as a function of r. Now, we are talking about the critical values. Okay, so, again let us look at these equations r star and delta g star, what do you see? What we see is that r star that we obtain here is exactly same as we obtained for homogeneous nucleation. On the other hand, delta g star is just a little bit different and what is that little bit different? It is just this s theta value. So, it means and what do we know s theta value s theta is value less than 1, it means that delta g star for heterogeneous reaction can be written as delta G star homogeneous nucleation times S theta. And in effect it means that delta G star heterogeneous is always less than delta G star homogeneous. So, heterogeneous will always be smaller than delta G star homogeneous. Now, you remember uh, what do you want? You want a smaller value of delta G or you want a larger value of delta G for easy nucleation? You want a smaller value of delta G for easy nucleation. So, it means that heterogeneous nucleation would be easier than homogeneous nucleation and this will become even uh, more clear when we look at the plot of variation of delta G as a function of R for both homogeneous nucleation and heterogeneous nucleation. So, this is our delta G and this is R. Now, if we plot first let us plot for homogeneous, this is for the homogeneous, this is how delta G varies when we have only homogeneous nucleation and this will be your r star for homogeneous and this will be your delta g star for homogeneous nucleation. How will it change if everything else that is delta t the material the liquid remains the same, but now you want to talk about heterogeneous nucleation, how are the things changing with respect to free energy? that r star terms will not change, we know from this, this remains the same r star is uh, remains the 2 gamma s l divided by delta g v, all these quantities remain same whether we are talking about homogeneous nucleation or heterogeneous nucleation. So, this r star value will remain same, but delta g star value will decrease, it will become delta g star homogeneous times s theta. Now, we will look at uh, exact value, what are the various values of s theta for different conditions. So, this will become so this is the plot for heterogeneous nucleation. So, this r star homogeneous is same as 
r star heterogeneous and this is delta g star heterogeneous. So, this is a much much smaller value of, but how much is smaller? Let us uh, remember s theta is just a function of theta. So, let us look at some of the values of theta and the corresponding value of cos theta. If you take a very small value of theta, something like let us say 10 degrees, then you get s theta equal to 10 to the power minus 4, it is a very very small value meaning this will be 10 to the power minus 4 times of this very very small somewhere like a flat line. Now, let us uh, make this theta equal to 30 degrees, then this becomes equal to 0 0.02, it is still small, but not as small as it was for 10 degrees. Now, let us make it 90 degrees, so this becomes 0 0.5, so even for very large, okay, even before I say that, I should say that as theta becomes very, very small, you get a much larger difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation. But even for very large theta values, like you see 90 uh, as high as 90 degree, because the s theta term involves cos theta. So, whether you increase beyond 90 degrees, it will not make a difference. So, if you are at 90 degrees, which is the maximum possible, you still have a factor of 0.5. So, the, your delta g will still be much smaller, half of delta g homogeneous. And uh, you remember from the nucleation rate, this delta g term comes inside the exponential factor. So, that will be, be still be a very, that will, this is small difference, just half 0.5 difference will still lead to a very large difference in nucleation rate that we will look at in next class. So, we will stop here and we will continue from here about discussing about the heterogeneous nucleation. Thank you.